The Pride and Sorrow of Magical Chess, Paul Morphy. We're now going to take a look at five of his most magical moments. Make sure you do like this video now and subscribe to the channel. This is pure energy, pure joy that we're going to see coming from his moves. One of my favourite players of all time. In this first example, he's playing against Henry Bird, uh, international English player. Henry Bird has just castled. Now, this really epitomises Morphy's style and his genius vision. Rook takes f2. I mean, just whoa, out of the blue. Thunderbolt chest. And this is amazing because of the ge geometric shapes that are created. This rook is now taken. And what is Morphy's idea? Can you see it? Well, he's opened up the third rank and now he can play queen to a3. Another simply astounding move. Threatening checkmate, but if the queen is taken, bishop takes a3, checkmate occurs. So the only defense is c3, trying to defend this. And after queen takes a2, we can see that Morphy has this brilliant attack. One idea is a check and then capture on b2, which would be checkmate. And after b4, he gave a check and now queen to a4 check. And here we see the second sacrifice. We have to break through white's defenses and bishop takes b4, allows the rook and queen to rampage against the naked white king. Pawn takes bishop, rook takes. The rook and queen are rampaging against the lone white king. A beautiful idea, one of my all time favorite ideas, but it doesn't stop there. We have more magical moments to look at from this legend of chess, Morphe. Let's go over to the second example now. This next example has something very poetic and artistic about it. Chess can be an artistic pursuit. It can be a science, it can be many things. But when Morphe was playing, it was more of something glorious to behold. Now, it's a bit easier than the last one. Can you spot it at home? Come on, guys. Let's get the little clock out. Ding, 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 ding. Black to move. What do you do? The move is knight to g3. And this is quite an astonishing move. Shades of the golden coin game, if you can remember that game of Frank Marshall's. The queens are interposed. And the problem is, if white captures the knight in any way, black just simply grabs the queen and will win the game. And after the kind of obvious move, queen takes g6, it's now checkmate. The knight slides in to e2 with an elegant finish, putting the cherry on the top of Morphe's cake. So a lovely final position, and let's move on to a, another magical moment from one of Morphe's brilliant games. Morphy loved sacrificing. He was um, in this world of capitalism, someone who liked to give a little bit to his opponent, but only with proper backing. So he could exchange queens, but that's a bit boring, is it not? What is the move? Well, he now plays queen takes f3, an astonishing sacrifice to tear apart the defense of the white king. And now after g takes f3, rook to g6 check. The idea behind the concept. The king slips into the corner and now another piece dives in. Bishop to h3. This attacks the rook. And when the rook moves, we see the yo-yo. And the yo-yo is where white cannot escape the checks, but black can sort of sit back and just enjoy himself. I can even see Morphy now having his pipe tobacco in the old days. This was allowed, not good for your health nowadays, and just enjoying himself at this moment. Bishop to g2, bishop takes f3, check. King f1, bishop to g2, the yo, yo. King to g1, bishop to h3. The king comes back, and now rather than repeating the position which would lead to a draw, he plays bishop takes f2, taking away the g1 square. So bishop to g2 is now going to be checkmate. There's only one defensive move, queen f1, but now white has to return his queen. And after the capture on f1, Morphy came in with the rook 
and he has a dominating position. All of Black's pieces are massing around the poor king on h1. The hungry bear gets his mark and wins in some style. A lovely example there, but there's still more to come. Let's move on to number four. Morphy had this sort of special superpower, I'd say, on the board to shock his opponents with moves that just came from nowhere. This is why I call him the magician, because he really did surprise. This next example is no different. It's Morphy to play. Can you find the Morphy concept? Now, he doesn't have that many pieces attacking, but with his next move, rook to e8, a sacrifice on an empty square, it allows the queen to come to c8. A little distraction technique. The king is distracted away from the bishop. White flies in to capture that bishop with check. The king comes forwards and now the second blow. Knight takes d5 check. Now, this is a brilliant move because queen to e6 check is only a check and black can defend and carry on with king to d8. But after the, another piece comes into the action, now the problem black has, if he takes with the queen, he loses his queen, he can resign. If he takes with the pawn, he loses his queen. Probably better than what he played though. He went king to d6 in the olden days. They like to resign in style. What a good show, old boy. If I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose with checkmate. Something which I would love to see a bit more of nowadays. And can you see it? Queen to c7. And they shook hands and they enjoyed a lovely, a lovely cognac as well, I believe, after the game. Lovely stuff. Lovely, lovely play. Bravo, bravo. Well, we've seen this concept before. It's white to play and win. And in this game, white is striking across two very impressive diagonals. The rook comes into e8, a simply lovely move to play. And this takes away the black's queen defense of the rook on f6. It has to be taken. And what is white's idea? Queen takes f6. And this is simply astonishing because if pawn takes, the bishop comes in and look at those laser beams. They're attacking the king and there's nothing that black king can do. If I ever got a checkmate like this, I would just sit there with a very smug look at my face and think, yeah, you know, look at that. I might even just have the board in front of me for at least a week. Go around, you know, even if I'm traveling public transport on the train, I'll get a random person and I'll just be like, yeah, look at that position. Look at that. I'd stick the pieces to the board, you know, on the bus. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, look at that, man. Look at that. That's what I created. I did that. I got the bishops, man. Yeah. Woohoo. So something to be proud of. Black tried to defend with queen to e7, defending this pawn, but now comes another astonishing concept. Queen takes g7, and this gets rid of that pawn. And after this slow and delicate move, f6, black cannot stop the end. The end is nigh. The point is, if black tries moving the queen anywhere, the pawn moves on, releasing the bishop. If that is blocked, the pawn marches on, a brave soldier, and delivers checkmate. So a lovely concept, black desperately took on g2, but it's clear to see he's losing here. There's still no adequate defense to f7. Oh, I just wish I could play chess like that. <laughs> so beautiful five examples. Do like this video, subscribe to the channel now, please. We're gonna have more examples coming up in the future, but Morphe, what a joy to behold. Have a little look at these videos.